And we return to our top story. A video purportedly from the Somali-based terror group Al-Shabaab calls for attacks on shopping malls here in the U.S. and overseas. For analysis, we turn now to David Sedney, who is a former State Department official and most recently was the Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense. David is joining us from Washington, D.C. Hi, David. It's good to see you. Thanks for being on Arise America. Thank you for having me. I really do appreciate it. So let me just ask you this. Um, is, uh, is there a, um, I don't know whether I should call it a, a, an imminent, but a real threat from al-Shabaab within our shores? This is certainly a serious threat. Uh, however, I'm sure that the kinds of uh, preparations and surveillance that uh, Secretary Johnson was talking about are doing a very good job of protecting people. Unfortunately, this kind of threat is something that we can't guarantee 100 percent against. In indeed, and it's not clear how they would be able to carry out some attack other than perhaps uh, motivating those who might be radicalized here within our borders. As we know, there is a large Somali uh, population in, the, in, Minnesota, in Minnesota, in the Minneapolis area, and not that uh, any of them are radicalized, but is there evidence or incidents of a push for radical radicalization in that area? Well, there is some evidence of that. Uh, over recent years, uh, there have been a small number of Somalis from the Minneapolis area who have gone to Somalia and joined al, Sh joined al Shabaab, and they're some of their most fierce fighters. So that has happened in a small number of cases. Uh, more broadly speaking, the phenomenon of small groups or individuals, uh, maybe called the motivated wolves rather than lone wolves because they're connected with others, that phenomenon is spreading around the world. And even if it's a small number, as we saw in the Charlie Hebdo attacks, they can do a huge amount of damage. In, indeed, and we know that other terrorist groups, extremist groups, have uh, made these efforts toward these motivated wolves. I like your characterization there. Is this al-Shabaab perhaps just taking a page from the so-called Islamic State or al-Qaeda, or do you think they have serious motivation to disrupt the economy and perhaps even cause violence uh, beyond the region in which they're mainly in operation? What we have here is a competition now, a competition between al-Qaeda, and al-Shabaab is very clearly aligned with al-Qaeda, and the Islamic State, ISIS. Uh, ISIS was behind some of the most horrific things that we've seen in the last year, and that's resulted in their getting more money and more recruits. Uh, Al-Qaeda and its affiliate, al-Shabaab, appear to be trying to compete, compete by inciting more violence, compete by seeking to do things that are more striking and they're more effective at getting adherence and money. So unfortunately, we are in a situation where there's a competition going now, and, and the object of that competition are innocent lives. You know what, David, because of this competition that you talk about, should the U.S. be changing its tactics and its war against terror? I believe we need to. Uh, our approach until now uh, has been the so-called counterterrorism approach that President Obama laid out in September when he spoke to the nation about ISIS. At that time, he hailed what he called successes in Sudan and Somalia. Uh, Somalia, where al-Shabaab just made this threat from, is far from a success. Yemen, over the last several months, has tumbled into disarray. And a large part of what's been going on uh, is because our very narrow uh, counter-terrorist approach, which is focused on using drones to kill people, has been more counterproductive than positive. Okay, I understand that, but then what are the other tactics? Of course, there's been a lot of talk in, as it relates to the war on terror, and that is ground uh, boots on the ground. The president promised that there would no, be no boots on the ground when uh, he asked Congress to authorize and co-sign his effort with the airstrikes. The U.S. is suffering from uh, a bit of battle or war fatigue, so beyond boots on the ground, or is that what you're saying is necessary? I'm saying we need more than just boots on the ground. We do need boots on the ground, but we need boots on the ground plus. The lessons of the last uh, 14 years uh, since the attack in, on the World Trade Center has been that when we do things small, when we pull out too early as we did in Iraq, things get worse. Uh, we could face a situation where we are going to have to make some tough choices. I understand that people are battle weary in a sense. On the other hand, uh, people are going to be even more wary of continued attacks. Uh, I think we ha are going to face some really tough challenges in the days ahead, days, weeks, and months ahead, and that's going to be hard. We don't, there, is, there are no quick, easy solutions here. Indeed, and it's going to generate a lot of conversation. I'm sure that is what's needed. David Sedney, thank you yeah. so much for your expertise. I do appreciate it. Thank you.